Hey everyone, this is Matt Prez, and welcome to a video featuring the Extrude feature. So now we're going to take a look at Extrude, and we're going to talk about it in several different instances. If you're familiar with SOLIDWORKS and you've done some CAD work before, then you're very familiar with an Extrude feature. It's the basis for a lot of parts. But there's a lot of functionality built into the SOLIDWORKS Extrude feature that I'm going to take a look at. So first we're going to start with the very basics. We're going to start a new sketch on the top plane. In this case, I'm just going to draw a center point circle. I'm going to make it a diameter of five inches. Now, when we go into an extrude feature, we have a few options here. It's going to automatically take the last selected sketch and it's going to try to extrude it out 0.1 if you're in uh, imperial measurement or 10 millimeters if you're in a metric template. So from here, the first thing we need to talk about is the from section. Now, by default, it's going to extrude from the sketch plane, but you also have options to do from surface, face, or plane. So you can select another plane that doesn't belong to the sketch or even a face. It doesn't have to be planar and it doesn't have to be perpendicular to the selected face. You can also select a vertex, which is essentially a point on the edge of something else or offset it from your original sketch plane. Now, for now, we're going to leave this as sketch plane, but note that you do have those options. And then in the direction one section, we have to choose how we want to extrude it. And this is essentially called the end condition. So we're going to go blind again, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from surface, up to body and mid plane. Now we're going to be talking about several of these, but for this example, we're going to start by using the mid plane extrusion. We're going to set an extrude distance of five inches and it takes it out from my sketch plane or the top plane in two and a half inches in both directions. Now from here, as we go down the options, we can draft it and we'll put on something a little bit more extreme, five degrees. You know that we can draft it inward and outward. It's important to note that when you're doing a mid plane extrusion, that it will be drafting away from the selected sketch plane. So this means that if you're trying to draft a molded part going from the midline, this will be a perfect example. But if you want the bottom to draft outward, then it doesn't really work that way. You can, go in here and instead of do mid plane, you could do blind draft at five degrees, do a direction two, out another five inches, draft it outward and get that, ex that exact orientation that you're looking for. So in this case, we're going to go back to mid plane and we're going to turn off draft. We also have a thin feature option. And when we select this, we're essentially shelling the part on the fly. So it takes the original sketch and it'll offset it either one direction, mid plane, or both directions, which allows you to control the thickness in either direction. We're not going to be using a thin extrude for this case, but just note that you do have that option as well. The selected contour section allows you to select single or multiple sketch entities from a single sketch. So this means if we had multiple circles in the original sketch, we could use these sketch contours to select those. Again, we'll be talking about more of these features as we get into this video a little bit. For now, let's just say OK, and let's move on to the next section. Now we're going to talk again about a little bit more of that solid extrude feature, but I also want to touch on surface extrude because there is some great functionality here, even if you're dealing with solid parts. Now this video isn't about surfacing, but it is about extruding. So let's take a look at this example. And this is something not a lot of people know about. So we're going to make a new sketch on our front plane and we're going to do a center point rectangle from the origin. And we're going to say out three inches by one inch and say, okay. So essentially what we've done is we've created a rectangular sketch and instead of extruding this solid, we're going to first take a look at how to do it as a surface. So to start, I'm going to use my curves drop down and create a split line, taking my sketch and splitting the cylinder. And now I have two faces on either side that have that rectangular shape. Now, if we want to use this for a solid extrude, you know that we don't really have the available option to click it and do anything. But if we use surfaces, we can select that face, select a direction, in this case, front. And what we're doing is we are extruding from that face outward. You notice that we do have some options. We can cap the end, we can delete the original face and knit the results. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to create a solid body. So we say, okay, Let's take a look at a section view. In this case, 
Let's go through our top plane or our right plane and notice that we do have a complete solid body. So again, this is a great way for you to use surfacing as surface extrude to still work with a solid body because we were able to take a split face, extrude it out and essentially offset the outside of it. Now there are other ways to do this. So I'm going to delete a surface extrude, delete the split line and take this sketch two. We're going to go back to our features, back to extrude. And this time the from dialog box, we're going to say surface. I'm going to select this surface and notice that it's automatically offsetting it out and keeping that outside face. The next thing that we want to do is we want to modify the end condition. So instead of blind, we're going to say offset from surface. And this gets a little tricky and some people have trouble with this because when we select this surface, it's going to deselect the original from sometimes. So you know that we selected it. Sometimes we have to reverse the offset. And notice that now we get that sort of extrusion here. And when we do this, when we use the offset from surface option, we have two things that we can talk about. So from a top view, we can simply offset the surface out. So if you offset an arc or a circle, the farther out you get, the larger the radius value is going to be, the more gradual that arc is. Or we can translate the surface. So this is more apparent when we get farther away. So let's say we do five units. If we translate the surface, it's simply going to move out that arc. But you'll notice that if we try to do something like offset the surface, it makes a very different result because we are essentially making an offset circle, a larger circle, and it changes the way that outside face looks. Now in here, if we merge results, we're going to get the same thing that we did when we use that surface extrude, but we have a little bit more in terms of control and options for what this outside face is going to look like. Now, of course, there are several other ways to do this inside of SOLIDWORKS, but we're just going to talk about some of the basics. So now let's look at a few other things that we can do. Let's start a new sketch. I'm just going to start a sketch on this bottom face and I'm going to just create some circles. I'm not going to really worry about doing a fully defined sketch here. And now we're going to do another extrude. So inside here, by default, it's going to take the closed profile and start to extrude it. If I go to my selected contours and I clear it, I can manually select what I want to extrude. And notice that I actually have the available option to extrude part of this face. If we rotate it around, it might be a little bit more apparent because of the way that it intersects the face we selected to create our sketch on. Now, even though we didn't have those lines directly inside of our sketch, we didn't use the convert entities, we didn't bring them in. In SOLIDWORKS 2016, it's smart enough to pick up on this and automatically divide my sketch up. So it can be pretty nice, especially if you want to make something like a new body. Let's go ahead and flip this around. A new body that goes up to vertex and we deselect merge results. We now have created a new body that exactly fits the rest of this part. It fits the outside profile, it can slide up and down. This is a great way to make multi-body components with very simplified sketches and without having to do too much extra work. So now we've covered really a few things in the extrude section. We covered just a basic extrude. We talked a little bit about the starting and end conditions. We talked about using a surface extrude that allowed us to delete the original faces knit the new ones and still keep a solid body. And we talked a little bit about some more in conditions such as up to vertex. Now there is one last thing that I want to talk about with extrude because I feel like it's an important topic and not again, not a whole lot of people use this functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these two bodies. I'm going to start a new sketch on the top plane. And in this case, I'm just going to do a center point rectangle again, not too concerned with the actual dimensions here. And then I want to start a new sketch on the right plane. Now on the right plane, I'm going to start from the origin and I'm going to take a line that goes up at an angle and say, okay. So now we're going to do again, a solid extrude of the original rectangle, but this time in the direction section, I'm going to select this edge. So notice that this allows us to take that original sketch profile that we created this rectangle and actually extrude it along a direction. 
Now this gets a little interesting when you do things like start to draft because you have areas where you're drafting, you know, essentially you're adding draft to this wall, but obviously you can't pull that from a normal direction from your sketch profile. So you have to think about the draft in a little bit different respect. But for the most part, this is a very handy thing because you can then go back, manipulate your sketches. For instance, we can modify this sketch, move it around and adjust the extrude on the fly. So this is also great if you have things like Instant 3D turned on, you can move the sketch around and see how it updates the profile. So this allows you to do some very quick and easy modeling and figure out how things are supposed to look without really committing to too much detail. So there are tons of different ways that you can use Extrude and I haven't covered them all here because there are really just too many to cover. But just keep that in mind next time you go to extrude that it's not just the basis for most of your designs from a simple sketch extruded up. There are a lot of different options that you can evaluate in here. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit LearnSolidWorks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.